people get persecuted simply for having personal conversations. It's uh, far beyond what we uh, might think about now, what, how the West sees it. Uh, unfortunately, there are people now being persecuted, not for just publications, but for their personal conversations, personal discussions. So last week, I interviewed a Ukrainian dissident journalist in exile. Although he does understand English, he spoke to me via his translator friend, Daria. We also had some Zoom issues, probably because we recorded this only days after the CrowdStrike server fallout. Hence, this time I had to cut the video quite a bit to take out the repetitions and overlay Daria's translations with Vasil's answers. Content-wise, I also checked with another colleague from the Donbass who told me that Vasil's description of the situation in Ukraine were what she knows from home as well, and she commends him for his courage of speaking out. With this out of the way, here we go. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and tonight I have a special guest with me. I'm talking to Vasil Muravitsky, a Ukrainian journalist who has been publishing highly critical reports about his government before and after the Euromaidan events back in 2014, for which he got into a lot of trouble. On 1st of August 2017, he was arrested by Ukrainian law enforcement and charged with high treason, and then he spent 11 months in a prison in Ukraine. He received support from several international human rights and journalism organizations. The International Human Rights Organization Solidarity Network in Switzerland recognized him as a prisoner of conscience, while the US-based Committee to Protect Journalists and Reporters Without Borders in France demanded his release. Amnesty International, too, recognized him as a prisoner of conscience, and the OSCE mission facilitated his request for political asylum in Finland because of persecution by the Ukrainian authorities. Basil still lives in Finland now from where he's talking to us. Uh, he's assisted, assisted by his translator, um, Daria, who is helping with the English. Um, both of you, welcome and thank you for taking the time. Thank you for your time, Pascal. Um, Vasil, you reached out to me and you are a very special case because it doesn't often happen that I'm, I'm getting emails from somebody who actually was in a Ukrainian prison and who went through a lot of this direct hardship. Could you tell us first what happened to you and why were you accused of high treason? Unfortunately, the situation in Ukraine is that uh, people, there is no freedom of speech there whatsoever. Uh, everything is being censored and uh, Vasily was persecuted and then uh, put to prison because of his criticizing the actions of the uh, current Ukrainian regime. Vasily says that the reason why he asked for this talk that we're having now is that uh, he personally is familiar with situations where people get sent to prison and people get persecuted simply for having personal conversations. It's uh, far beyond what we uh, might think about now, what, how the West sees it. Uh, unfortunately, there are people now being persecuted not for just publications, but for their personal conversations, personal discussions. Uh, what Vasily told us now is that uh, one of the men he's talking about um, simply had a group chat on Telegram with his wife and his son where he was discussing the current war. He was sharing some links from uh, Russian uh, media uh, Perhaps, yes, they were critical uh, about the war, but the idea is that this chat was personal. Uh, it wasn't publicated anywhere. And even for that, the, the man was uh, put into, sent into prison for 10 years. And there are tens and tens of such cases. The, 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 the West is hailing Ukraine as a grand uh, uh, example of democracy. I mean, the whole rhetoric in the West is that uh, the, we need to defend democracy and, and human rights in Ukraine. 
Um, what do you say to slogans like these when you hear them? Простой пример. Сейчас в Украине уже практически остался один шаг. Василий says that one of the biggest misconceptions about Ukraine is that the uh, freedom of speech is still alive there. Uh, he's talking about the uh, law which is about to be enforced, where um, they are about to simply cancel the uh, even idea of uh, traditional religion, the uh, orthodox um, religion, and people are about to be uh, people are about to be stopped from even they will not be allowed to uh, to be religious in their own houses in their own buildings. Uh, so I'm afraid there is he says uh, there is no talk of freedom of speech in Ukraine, unfortunately. Uh, it, it's uh, one, that, one step away from uh, complete. Uh, даже so советская власть. Even даже... during the Soviet times, Stalin did uh, persecute people who uh, were religious, and he, yes, he even killed priests, but uh, the religion was never forbidden. Uh, it, there were never any laws um, which could forbid uh, being religious and have this religion, but Zelensky's regime is doing exactly that. Zelensky's regime and his party are doing that. How do you think, is it possible that although inside Ukraine there is so much heavy-handed censorship and repression going on, that despite this happening, it is still possible that outside of Ukraine, in the West, uh, this, this narrative is is uh, out that Ukraine is actually a, a, a good democracy. Why is it possible that the news of what's actually happening in Ukraine is not getting out into the West? По очень простой причине, потому что Украина является субъектом войны против России. То есть этот конфликт, который раз The reason is simple. Uh, Ukraine is simply a tool in this global war against Russia and uh, like Vasily says, uh, the tool needs to be sharp, which is exactly why uh, Ukraine is being used as a tool in this global war. I'm not saying that uh, I agree with all of the uh, actions that Russia is doing, but uh, thinking of Ukraine as a democratic uh, as a democratic country is a big, big mistake. And the longer we think that way, the worse the consequences are going to be. Я приведу дальнейший пример. One of the examples is uh, the people who currently live on the territories uh, occupied by Russia currently. Uh, for those people, Ukraine has stopped uh, paying any any social payments, any social benefits, and they also claim that people living there uh, will not be entitled to any payments whatsoever. They are forbidden to uh, take part in any official life of the government. So the idea is if the Ukraine gets their territories back, uh, those people will either go to jail or will have to simply uh, move to other places. So the idea is Ukraine simply forgot, forgot, abandoned the people living there. И эта аналогичная ситуация уже происходила в 2014-2015 году по отношению к жителям Крыма. Когда я написал... Uh, Василий said that uh, it, a very similar situation happened in 2014 uh, with Crimea, people living there. Uh, in his post, he said that uh, we should not leave people with no gas, no water, no social benefits. Otherwise, when we come, people will just forget about us. Uh, people needed to stay connected to Ukraine. Uh, however, uh, for those posts, for, for, for uh, that mindset, he was sent to prison. Can I ask you, um, how, would, or how does that work or would that work? Now, the, Russia occupies um, parts of eastern Ukraine. Um, is, are the banking connections still working? Are there still, are these people who are living in the occupied territories, should, are they still able to access um, services from Ukraine, even despite the occupation? Uh, currently, there are only Russian banking services uh, working uh, on the occupied territories, and this is exactly what Vasily is talking about. Um, 
the idea is uh, people were declined uh, in all of their rights. All, all of the Ukrainian banking services just stopped working on the occupied territories, uh, which is why uh, over some time Russia enforced a new law where people living there had to become, uh, had to get the Russian citizenship, had to become Russian uh, citizens. And um, Ukraine uh, enforced a very similar law, which is uh, if you use Russian banking system, if you become a Russian citizen, you will uh, not be able to remain a Ukrainian citizen. And this is uh, a situation where people in those territories are declined everywhere and are refused everywhere. Uh, Vasily's opinion is that uh, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who are still able to love Ukraine and still do. But unfortunately, if the war goes on uh, after some time, people will lose this ability to love their, uh, their country, to love Ukraine, and they will, just, they will stop wanting uh, for Ukraine to go back. Эти территории будут навсегда потеряны, это первое. А почему они не захотят возвращения? Uh, for people living there, the situation is difficult because uh, even if they become, even if they have any, get any position uh, while being, uh, while continue living on the occupied territories, even if they become an assistant to a headmaster at school, if they become a nurse or a doctor uh, while on the territory while it's still occupied by Russia. Uh, if the Ukraine comes back, if the Ukraine uh, gets the territory back, they will be uh, prosecuted for one of the two laws. Uh, it's either collaboration. Collaborationism or high treason. Uh -huh. Yes, high treason or uh, that. And um, uh, people really have no choice there because uh, the punishment for, for that is uh, starting at uh, 20 years, uh, 12, I'm sorry, 12 years in prison up to uh, a full life sentence. That is, that is потому, absolutely потому, uh, if, uh, потому, uh, остановится... uh, if the war doesn't stop now, in three or four years, uh, the territories will never go back and there will be no realistic, uh, there will be no point in uh, returning them. And you are from Western Ukraine, as far as I understand. And how is the um, the mood in Ukraine between the West, the center and the East? Um, do you see big differences between how, um, how different groups inside Ukraine currently look at the war and what has to be done? Because you wrote to me that you belong to the people in you, the Ukrainians who want to end the war as soon as possible, right? Я могу сказать, что все все на территории Украины, ну большинство хотят. The majority, the vast majority of people in Ukraine uh, wants to end the war as soon as possible. Uh, people are fleeing. People are trying not to get mobilized, and uh, the majority of people wants for the war to end. Uh, Lviv, which is in the very west part of the Ukraine. Uh, after talking to them, Vasily says that uh, only 2% of uh, people who were uh, mobilized uh, came there uh, out of their free will. Do you think that, um, that everybody wants to end the war? But the question is how to end the war. Um, do you think that a big, a big number of Ukrainians would be willing to, to change the borders of Ukraine in order to end the war? I mean, give up uh, regions in the east and, and, and have an, an a understanding with Russia that, okay, we are going to redraw the map. Я не могу ответить на этот вопрос, потому что даже... I'm not able to answer to this question because people are simply afraid to talk about that. Even if you're having a, a personal conversation, a phone call with a close friend, if you say stuff like that, uh, there are cases, Vasily says, there are cases, legal cases, where people uh, got sent uh, to prison for five years uh, for simply saying, sharing such thoughts uh, during their personal conversations.
в, в городе на севере Украины под названием Житомир. Один человек и в, вышел покурить на работе вместе с другим. In Житомир, in uh, uh, a uh, city of Ukraine, uh, one of the men, just one of the employees, was talking to uh, his fellow employees on a uh, small break. And uh, he shared a similar thought uh, about redrawing the map, changing the uh, borders of Ukraine. And uh, apparently one of uh, his co-workers had a recording device placed on him by, uh, allegedly by a secret service. And um, that man uh, was persecuted for uh, sharing his thoughts on a small break with his colleagues. И даже в социологии, даже социология не может этого показать, потому что на Украине сейчас существует такое явление. There is a phenomenon which is, uh, which even sociology cannot explain, uh, no social studies can explain. It's uh, similar to schizophrenia, where uh, you give two different answers to two very similar questions, where if one question is, do you want to end war as soon as possible, people say yes. And then the next question is, are, are you willing to give up the uh, territories and redraw the map and people say absolutely not uh, because if they say yes if they do uh, then that would be social suicide it would be socially uh, a um, potentially social socially um, dangerous answer so what you're saying is also we have no way of knowing what actually the real preferences of people in ukraine today are about how to how to end the war because they wouldn't be able to express these opinions uh, honestly absolutely However, uh, i want to say that it is dangerous simply dangerous но тем не менее люди люди очень сильно устали however people all people are very tired of war very tired of the consequences uh, in lviv uh, there are areas now where people get Uh, electricity get the power only for two hours a day you're living now in finland are you feeling relieved that you are living in a society where you can uh where you can do your job as a journalist and where you're not uh persecuted um and do, are you still able to access people in ukraine digitally can can you still have honest conversations with your colleagues friends and family back home yes конечно мне многие многие мне сотни человек answering the first question uh, it's more than just relief because if i were in ukraine now i would have been killed or assassinated or uh, put into prison back into prison and uh, answering the second question yes uh, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, write to me uh, on social media so в Европе начинаются разговоры. Uh, yes, there are more and more talks in Europe now uh, about how the war should end as soon as possible. More and more people realize that it should be ended peacefully, and perhaps the reason for that is uh, the change of the president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, who uh, is one of the candidates, uh, was talking about how uh, he was going to shift. Uh, or at least put a part of the responsibility uh, for the war on Europe, uh, which is uh, why people are starting to change their mindset. But uh, people in Europe are very welcoming to all of the refugees. And there is, there is an opinion uh, in more and more people about how the war should be ended as soon as possible. И, к примеру, вот я при получил приглашение на конференцию, где будут в Словакии, где будут проходить Василий was recently invited to a conference uh, where there will be a lot of people, people from Slovakia as well, uh, talking about uh, and discussing uh, the ways to end the war in a peaceful way and as quickly as possible. And what in your personal opinion, but... what would be the best way to do that? Um, what, what is the most realistic way today to end the war diplomatically? Uh -huh. Какой путь? Мы должны начать говорить в первую очередь не только о помощи. Да-да-да, я понял. Слышно, Дарья? Uh, there is uh, one thought that I want to share, and is that uh, in Europe there are uh, no people, no governors who uh, have the who have experienced uh, 
the situation which happens to Ukraine now. So uh, the way to end this as soon as possible is start talking about it, start talking about the post-war Ukraine, how it would work, uh, what it would look like. Потому как, There are no people qualified, no people with uh, the experience to solve uh, such crisis that Ukraine has faced. So the first step is to start talking about it. And Я имею в виду, никто не знает в Европе. No, no one in Europe knows how to do that. And we also have the problem that uh, currently the political process in Ukraine seems blocked as well because there is no, there was no presidential election. Uh, the term of Mr. Zelensky has a, has uh, ended officially. The the country is still under emergency law. There's uh, 11 parties are forbidden. I mean, Ukraine itself as a political entity is is um, is not working the way it is supposed to. Um, do you think that there is a that there's a way for Ukrainians themselves to change this now, even while the fighting is still going on in the East? The Ukrainians are uh, peaceful people and they realize that uh, it's, uh, it, it will be the same for at least five years, uh, but uh, realistically even ten. So uh, they will not... Uh, deal with it, they will not try to change it themselves. Moreover, people are less worried about politics, but uh, all they're thinking about now is how to survive. And uh, one of the examples is an acquaintance of mine. Um, uh, his aunt recently died in Kiev. And uh, when they tried to bury her, they couldn't because there were powder uh, power outage and uh, no morgues worked. They couldn't simply bury her. There were no uh, places uh, on the cemetery because she wasn't, a, uh, she wasn't in the military. So uh, they were offered to um, cremate her body, but uh, that went against their uh, religious, uh, their, re their religion. So this is the kind of things people have to think about, but not the politics. This is uh, how it is in the real life, and this is exactly why uh, Russian, uh, American, and perhaps Chinese leaders, maybe some leaders in Europe, uh, must start talking about it. Would you want Ukraine to surrender? Would, if that was an option, would you say, like, yes, surrender is better than this? Uh, even though I am in Finland now, I am a Ukrainian citizen, so I am not able to answer that question. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, uh, a law, uh, sorry, a, a case opened against me. Uh, and this is exactly uh, an example of uh, how freedom of speech does not exist in Ukraine at the moment. Но я скажу китайской мудростью о том, что Иногда проиграть войну. But I will say a Chinese saying, which is sometimes to lose a war is to win, and to win a war is to lose. Uh, as an example, Soviet Union won uh, in the Second World War, but uh, the cost of that is that we still up to this date uh, keep finding uh, graveyards of uh, unknown soldiers and uh, the country uh, on which territory on whose territory the war is going, is losing. Yes, and you know, I, I was asking this question not because I want to create problems for you, but because I am here in Japan in a country that did surrender in the Second World War. And that surrender was the beginning of a very, very good development forward, right? So... Uh, but it's another question, sorry. My question would be, um, in the political process in Ukraine, who is the biggest problem? Are there like these um, ultra-right-wing forces that make it impossible for the, the politicians in Ukraine to actually give up or to, to find a diplomatic solution? Or is it... Is it the entire, is it the 
uh, the, the corruption inside the government that keeps the solution from, from coming up, that keeps the politicians from negotiating? Sure. Um, there is one thing stopping Ukraine from making this decision, and it is that uh, the belief, the false belief that victory is inevitable. Even Zelensky talked about that, uh, that the victory is inevitable. However, it is not. Uh, Russia has bigger resources, uh, human resources, arms resources. Uh, so um, there is another saying, which is when uh, the rich man loses his riches, the poor man dies. This is, this is very true. Um... So... И потому я, 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 я не хочу поражения Украины. Я хочу, чтобы Украина сохранилась как государство, чтобы украинский народ сохранился. Но uh, I don't want uh, Ukraine to fall. I want Ukraine to uh, uh, to remain itself, and uh, I want uh, the culture and the people to remain themselves. Uh, however, uh, it has lost so much power. And uh, uh, Vasily, извините, когда вы uh, какому времени вы говорили про низкую рождаемость? В прошлом году в прошлом году была рождаемость самая низкая за триста лет. Um, uh, last year in Ukraine, uh, it was the all-time low of birth rate in uh, 300 years in Ukraine. Uh, so unless there is a, uh, a genius break on, on, uh, on the occupied territories or unless Russia collapses, uh, there is no way to change that. Uh, and even if the war stops right here, right now, uh, it will take decades and decades to bring uh, Ukraine back to the level of uh, uh, 2022. Um, who, in your opinion, um, inside Ukraine has the most potential to, to lead the country into a better future? I mean, it's certainly not Mr. Zelensky, but in, in the current environment, are there any politicians in the Rada or somewhere who you think could serve as future leaders to to bring prosperity back. It's hard to say because so many people left Ukraine. Uh, if if we were to count almost the population of Hungary, uh, is the amount of people who left uh, that left Ukraine. So uh, it's really hard to say. Okay, and. Uh, in order to finish the, this interview, is there anything else that you would like the world to know that you want everybody, especially in the West, to understand about how Ukraine today works after two and a half years of war? Ukraine to remain there. If you want the Ukrainian people to uh, remain uh, there, uh, you need to stop the war right here, right now. Okay, th those are very strong words. Um, the war needs to stop as soon as possible. I absolutely agree. This bloodshed is, 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 is horrible, absolutely horrible and useless. Um, Vasil, I am very glad that you are um, speaking out and that you are, that you are still reporting um, about Ukraine, even when you're abroad. Uh, Daria, thank you very much for your translations. And I hope we'll sit together again when we have a better connection. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you, Daria. Thank you.